Welcome to the interior of the car. You guys have probably seen me rip out a number of interiors. Not much is going to be very different in this case, but like I said, we need to get this cluster cover off. The switch is already kind of loose in there, so we'll have a bit of a head start. And reason for that, we're going to be doing LED conversion. Second reason, we need to get the speedo cable off because we actually need to run it through a different hole because a speedo cable is actually run through the hole that the clutch cable would run through on an auto. So we're going to get that sorted out. And at the same time, by removing a lot of these dash elements, it's actually going to make our lives easier to try and get all the bolts out for the brake booster, which ultimately is pretty much what the clutch pedal assembly bolts to. So we're going to get started here and, um, you know, just basic stuff, guys. Uh, you want to take your time. Again, Florida car, right? So we want to make sure we don't do any damage. You guys can take in this beautiful blue interior. <laughs> um, funny enough, I'm going to be mixing some stuff up in here so it's not going to be all blue going forward. But I have to say, this interior is an immaculate shape for what it is. And, you know, short of a proper 5.0 steering wheel. You know, they did a really good job on this conversion. So, let me go ahead, get these guys off. Nice and easy. And here's a nice little one for you guys, if you didn't know this, but you know how you always have to push that button to unlock your steering column on your five liter? Well, four cylinder cars don't have that. So you can actually just turn your key back off and pull your key out without that annoying, you know, button underneath to, uh, I never really understood that. It's always impressive to see when these are actually on. Um, unfortunately, part of the cluster cover has suffered and that is snapped. Again, probably the heat slash somebody tightening it down too much. All right, the one screw is actually missing up in there. There's normally a little torque screw. They must have lost that one when they were trying to put everything back together. I do want to share with you guys a little something something. So you know, we have a wiring harness that's over here, so we'll pinch that and get that off. And we can see the lovely Speedo cable in the back there. Now I'm not going to even lie to you guys. I didn't even know how to take these off properly for the longest time. I would pull, I'd put a screwdriver in these holes, and you know what? You know, nothing should be that difficult that you need to reef or pry or whatever, especially in something that's, you know, as fragile and gentle as a cluster here. Oh, I'll have to get that wire back in. You guys, the uh, hazard switch is notorious for the wires coming out. And I've seen people just jam them into random spots and then all of a sudden people wonder why their turn signals don't work and everything else. Well, your turn signals are all wired through this hazard harness. So make sure you put the wires back in the right clips. And then I usually um, end up putting something to keep all these wires back in place. You can see someone broke that connector and everything else. Anyways, back to what we were talking about. Because I knew somebody was going to be like, oh, there's a wire out. So, back to the Speedo. All you do, guys, is you push on either side of this connector. And pull. A good angle. So, you can see here. All you got to do is push. 
right there. See how that came out? So simple and you're gonna feel very foolish if you've been doing something else for a long time like I did. Now, mind you, I'm talking about when I started ripping these things apart, I was 15 years old and it took me until I was about maybe 18. And uh, you know, 10 part outs later. And that's the thing too, when you're parting out a car, you really don't care what you're doing that much. But when you do care, you wanna get it right. And there's another clip on the left side of the cluster. Cluster is out. Actually looks like it's in pretty nice shape. Only 38,000 miles on this bad boy. Obviously that's been changed because it has the proper V8 tack in it. So a four cylinder car, the tack could only go to 6,000. So somebody has swapped this out accordingly to represent the 5.0 red line. Start by removing this make life easier. There we go, just like that. Those are all going up to the gauges that are in the AC vent. So they can sit over there. All right, so let's keep going here. Sorry to, uh, Keep you guys waiting. Yo. As I do this, we don't need this assembly. So this is what locks through the ignition and goes down to your gear selector. If you guys have a factory auto car, um, this guy is not going to be needed anymore if you're doing a five-speed swap. Again, I'm not sure why there's a tie wrap on there, so that'll leave. All right. So, once you get that off, and it's really nothing fancy, um, you can remove, there you go, this whole bit. And you can see it was actually already, someone had cut it and frayed it and did whatever because it had a aftermarket uh, ratchet shifter set up in there. So I'm going to take the multi-function switch off the column. Yeah, I love these nitro gloves that just keep ripping on you. All right, so I have all the connectors undone for the steering column and the steering column's just on its own. And now, it's the extension game. You guys might be wondering what the extension game is. Well, you're gonna need probably at least three, if not more extensions to get all the way to the back and on to where that brake booster slash pedal assembly bolts to. And there's four main bolts and you just gotta look straight through. You're gonna see them when you get your head up in there. All right guys, so those are the four main bolts up around that area. Now the next one that we need to get off is actually straight up. See that nut right there? We gotta get that off. I believe is a half. Let's see in a second here. Yep, it is a half. So we're gonna get that. Oh, there's my socket. Aha! I knew it was hiding somewhere. Okay. The other part that needs to come, uh, 
you guys are gonna be like, oh, it's, every time you say you gotta take this off, then there's something else. Well, yeah, there's there's a lot to this, guys. Um, we're actually gonna have to loosen this bolt over here, this 5 16 which goes over to here, to this guy, because this guy is actually, um, we got we, the clutch pedal assembly is actually this next layer here. So we got to get this guy off in order for that to be able to drop down. So this 5 16 you're going to have to get this little retainer clip here which kind of holds the stud in place the easiest thing to do is just bend the uh, bend the tab and then thread that down okay so now we can see that's willing to move and we gotta do the same thing in the back here. Right. And with some tweaking, you can uh, drop this panel down. Get the brake pedal switch off. Don't lose the little bushing that just not sure if you, saw, you guys saw that fall, but it did. Okay, switch out of the way. Here's the little bushing, don't lose this. Then you can slide the brake booster off of the brake pedal, which, brake pedal assembly, and then there's the other bushing. So don't lose any of your bushings, guys. And the reality now is we should be able to pull the brake booster out from the engine bay. The one thing that we have to keep in mind is the master now is going to have to move forward. So these lines are going to have to end up getting bent into position anyways. So we'll just kind of carefully yet strategically move our master up like that. And that should allow us to Grab our booster. And pull it out. There it is. If you notice, this is actually where the clutch cable goes through. So what we need to do is pop this grommet out and the speedo cable is now going to get relocated to here. So just like that. Pop that grommet out. Alright, so we got to pull off our That's the uh, vacuum line for the cruise control. You might want to make note of where it is. That is if you even use your cruise. When you put it back, I'd say, you know, thread it about halfway. All right, guys, so I ran into a little bit of snag here. Any of you guys who've done this before probably would have realized or asked, why didn't I just pull the steering column out? Well, last time I did this, I believe I had Recaro seats and the seats 
retracted back further enough that the wheel would actually go down to the floorboard and give me more than enough room to get the pedal assembly out. In this case, there's the seat won't go back anymore and I can't get the wheel all the way down. So I've just gone ahead and disconnected the bolt in the firewall, it's just 11 16 nut, 5 8 bolt. And um, this should be able to just slide right out now. And once that's out, well, it give you a lot more room to work with in the beginning. I was just trying to do it, leaving it in there and not having to really worry about it. But there you go, guys. Um, you're gonna have to do it. If your wheel won't go all the way down to the floorboard, you're not gonna be able to maneuver that thing out. Or maybe you can, but um, it's not even worth the effort for the two minutes that it takes to take that bolt out and pull out the steering column. Your life's gonna be that much easier. There we go. All right, guys, and it's out. So now we can grab our clutch pedal assembly here. Good shape, there we go. What you can actually do is grab the pedals and push up just like that. All right. And now, this guy. There we go. Beautiful. So, what you guys want to make sure of that this bolt threads in no problem and that this stud is right into that groove with no issues that everything else sits real nice and that your holes for your brake booster because you want the booster to be able to pass through so you got to make sure that those holes are all lined up all right guys so this is going to be the stopping point for tonight i'm not going to put the steering column back in yet why because i still need to clean up and paint that brake booster and it's going to be easier to bolt it on with the steering column out. So hopefully this video gives you a really good idea on what is involved and what you need to do in order to get that third pedal in the car. And I got to say, it's looking good in there already, even though the rest of it isn't all bolted up. You guys can also see I took a few minutes to get that ratchet shifter out and also got those gauge vents removed as well. I'll be getting some LEDs jammed into the cluster and the climate controls. And other than that, I'm really happy. There's really no hacked wiring or anything like that. The gauges were super straightforward. The parts pile has grown a little bit on the floor here, which is all right. Bunch of possible resale items here. So if anybody is looking for some automatic ratchet shifter, relocated oil cooler type stuff or anything hit me up hell i even got an automatic pedal assembly if anybody's looking for one of those in case you guys are wondering how much time did i spend in terms of cleaning up the engine bay and cutting stuff out and doing the five speed pedal assembly swap um, i'm in it for just under four hours probably about three and a half hours so really not too bad for an evening's work on a weekend and the reality is, you know, if I actually had the motor, it's on a stand, but it needs to get cleaned. So I'm going to be doing my touch to the motor, getting that all shiny and prepped up. And it's going to be pretty straightforward. Honestly, the hardest part of the five speed swap are the pedals. Once you get the pedals out of the way, the rest is easy. So I'm really happy. This thing should come together pretty quick and be interesting to see how it drives. And, you know, I know the motor runs good because it came out of that other car. We just need to do some magic, clean it up and all those other things. And probably gonna take this pinstripe off. Although it kind of flows with the blue interior, I just, I'm not a fan of the pinstripe. And this one's got some, you know, cause it is hand painted on there. So I'll probably get some thinner, get that off. You know, still gotta redo the trim and We'll get this thing cleaned up. We'll get it right. It's ready for paint. The ugliest things now are the valve covers, the oil pan and the timing cover.